I will open the Centerville Town Council meeting from July the 14th, 2020, and it is 7.03, and will you call the roll, please? Dan Wandersee? Here. Gary Holbert? Here. Jack Boddicker? Here. Mark Tucker? Here. James Bullen? Here. All attending. And while the minutes are still uh, going around, has everyone gone over the uh, uh, bills? The adjustments? Or no. The, the claims? The claims. Yeah. Yeah. Here. James. Then I would entertain a motion to accept the claims. I make that motion. Dan, can I have you move the mic a little bit closer? Thank you. Okay, I've got a motion by Mark. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Jack. Will you call the roll, please? Dan Wandersee? Aye. Gary Holbert? Aye. Jack Bodiker? Aye. Mark Tucker? Aye. James Bullen? Aye. All ayes, no nays. Also, uh, we have the billing adjustment for $83.15. I would entertain. Is that a negative? It's correct. A negative, $83.15. Thank you. I would entertain a motion on the billing adjustment. So moved. I have a motion by Gary. Do I have a second? Third. I have a second by James. Will you call the roll, please? Dan Wandersee? Aye. Gary Holbert? Aye. Jack Bodiker? Aye. Mark Tucker? Aye. James Bullen? Aye. All ayes, no nays. Gary, we're still looking. I'll come back to the minutes. Next item that we have, uh, of course, the CYL, you can take that off. That's been taken care of. Underneath the old business. I would go ahead and also take off the burn permit because that's not going to come back up anytime soon. Same way with the restroom uh, buyers. There's no opening that up right now, so we'll <coughs> take that off. Uh, we'll leave the locker on there. So what are we waiting on on that? What, what are we what are we seeking for that? We've, we've talked to the uh, uh, county and, and until they, I guess, see where the corner selection goes, they would not talk any further. Okay. Jack, uh, animal ordinance update. I um, have sent to everybody a questionnaire that I'm assuming that uh, the clerk will put out at uh, August Bill, is that correct? Yes. And then uh, I've had some feedback from uh, Dan. I know he said he would like an owner responsibility issue, and I think he wanted to speak a little bit on that. Um, and then I know everybody, including James, everybody else has kind of looked out on the internet and seen some things. Um, I'm thinking maybe by the first of September we can move forward and just get this done and see see where we go from there. Um, it is Ed on via Zoom. Okay, so um, he was the one that I originally talked to about. He said it'd be very simple to just pull that uh, Staffordshire Terrier. Uh, band straight out of that and leave the rest of the animal ordinance, but along with some other concerns of people making sure that owner responsibility and 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 uh, some concerns that they might have might be represented as well. So September, I would think by then we can take a vote and move forward with it. What I had asked Jack was, uh, you know, after we get the questionnaire back and go through it. I would like to see definitely that we put a thing in there for owner's responsibility to where if they have a vicious dog and it's deemed so that uh, we got some steps in there to put it back on the homeowner, uh, especially make sure that they carry insurance uh, on 
on that and have proof of that. Uh, they already have to come in and get their license you know, and stuff for, the, for their animals. So that was one thing I talked to Jack that I thought that uh, would help in this situation for any breed. Yeah. So I've asked him to you know, look at that, put that in. Oh, there's a potential issue with this letter that you wrote. Is if you put in there mixed uh, or any mixed breed. Mixed would... breed of Staffordshire Terrier. Okay. That's exactly the way the the ordinance is wrote. Everything I wrote in there is straight out of the ordinance. Okay, but what I'm saying is the majority of the people are going to read that, and they're going to look at that and say any mixed breed. Mixed versus... breed of Staffordshire Terrier. It doesn't specifically say that. I mean, when I read it, I first thought I, I was a mixed beagle. I, I wrote down exactly what's in what's in the 9109. Look at 9109. I understand exact words. Because everybody kept calling it pit bull, but that's not their correct, correct. term. It's American Staffordshire Terrier. As I think Mr. Buckles pointed that out last time. So, um, and that's that's to release that band, but yet. No matter whether you got a boxer or a Goldman Pinscher or a Chihuahua, we need some kind of a owner responsibility and then, and then um, some kind of financial and or um, insurance backup with that to make that. That makes guys like Dan feel a little bit better about maybe voting for or against this banner or to lift it or not. So. And you just had the one question on there. And I know we had also discussed adding things for the trash, questions for the trash. Did we want to put more than just one question on it? I, that, that's not where I, I mean, that's not what I intended to do at that time. I was more concerned about, not that that's not an issue. Well, I know it had um, been discussed last week because Gary had said, what if we wanted to yeah. put two more questions? Page. Are we going to? Um, I'm assuming that the uh, owner liability would constitute all animals in town or just football. Any dog, if we go with a vicious dog, that would that would take care of any dog that would bite somebody. So, are we going to put in there the owners are responsible for all dogs or just pit bulls? No, it's it's any breed. Okay, okay, so that, that was the whole okay deal. All right. Well, I just want to clarify that because we're talking about. It. I've, I've not, not just had Dan, I've had several people contact me that says, well, what about this kind of dog? Or what about that kind of dog? So um, most of them are bigger dogs, but it doesn't mean a little dog could do some damage. Anything else on that? The ordinance 20. 2003 and 2020. We will leave those on there for right now. So can I ask what the 202006 refers to? That was just uh, the one that uh, we looked at at parking spaces and we found out that we don't really have to do that. But they want, everybody wants to just leave that on there for right now. I would just say just remove that if that's not an issue. Well, then we can remove it. I mean, I, I me. okay. so you can remove 06. I mean, I think that was a little confusing yeah. when we did the handicap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So does it just sit there forever in the introduced or do you actually make a motion to make it dead? I, I don't know. I'm just asking. Well, I thought about uh, that. You know, a lot of these may come back up and we've got information on them that if we just make a separate list and you can keep that on ours that they can look at so it's not you know, some of them say forgotten uh, but yet it's not showing up every time on here mr president yes um i don't know maybe it's my understanding that the state statue and i don't know if ed can speak on this or not state statue already stands on that and then my understanding is if we made a home rule in town that that would supersede, but this was kind of like an exception to the rule, I thought, for one individual right. at a time. Right. Um, 
So unless we're going to make individual exceptions or I don't know what, what I mean, I'm, I'm speaking out of my knowledge area there. We can create a, a temporary, uh, for instance, handicap parking spot. I think that's what we're referring to, right? Right. Individuals from the beach that wanted that. And we did that, took care of it, we can enforce it. Okay. Just like we put a temporary little parking sign. We can Is that something it. under your jurisdiction you wouldn't yeah. even need? You don't even need our compliance to do that, correct? So, state statute lets you do that, and, and that's your job, and you do your job, and I do mine. So, I'm just striking it, and I'm not keeping it on the list, then? On this one? No, take it off. Take it off completely. Uh, uh, if it makes it any better, I'll make a motion that we remove that 2020-06 okay. designation got, parking so spot. I've got a motion by Jack to remove that. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by James. We call the roll, please. Dan Wandersee? Aye. Gary Holbert? Aye. Jack Boddicker? Aye. Mark Tucker? Aye. James Bullen? Aye. All ayes, no nays. Okay, motion carried. The, uh, anything on the town's plan from A and Z that you know of? Um, Mark, it was discussed at the planning commission. I don't know if there's really a decision made. No, we have to make decisions. And then we have uh, Mr. World, uh, Kevin, did, have you had a chance to, you know, we had a little discussion to dig into. Well, I make a motion that we remove the gravel and we, we put dirt and seed it um, since it's, and we went into the yard. Yeah, I've got a motion by James to remove the gravel and reseed it. Actually, and let me, I think that needs to go all the way back to the original. Um, we, I mean, we just kind of took off down through there. We hold the right away his property line. Okay, I understand that. Okay, so take it from the yard. My original motion. I'll second. Got a second by Mark. We pull the roll, please. To remove gravel and reseed, right? Yeah, just on his property. Okay. Dan Wandersee? Uh, Could you repeat that, please? Could you repeat your? Aye. Thank you. Gary Holbert? Aye. Jack Bodiker? Aye. Mark Tucker? Aye. James Bullen? Aye. All ayes, no nays. Motion carried. Mr. President? Yeah. I, I mean, the way I understood that, and I guess you're understanding that the same way, that knowing that if we need to get in there for any reason, we do have easement, we might make a tire track or something like that. Hopefully we don't. Hopefully we don't tear a big hole or sink our truck in there or anything, but... We can't look no worse than the gravel that's there now. So according to you, that's that, that's an obvious and that you I'm don't very like very that. You tell the easement. Okay, understand. Good enough. Thank you. Okay, the next item we have is a Boltman uh, invoice. And you know, again, I talked to Ed Martin, uh, and he advised us that we. So we could not set a precedent, so I would entertain a motion on Mr. Boltman's invoice. I make a motion that uh, we pay Mr. Boltman um, um, the money he had to pay for his well. I've got a motion by James that we should pay Mr. <coughs> Boltman the money he had for his well. Do I have a second? Hearing none, the motion fails. Mr. President, I make a motion to go with the attorney's recommendation and um, deny payment on Mr. Boatman's bill. Okay, I've got a motion by Jack to go with the attorney's advice and 
denied the invoice. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Gary. Discussion? Will you call the roll, please? We have discussion. Can we talk about it for a minute? Go ahead. Well, I, I think with the, with the, uh, the 17 years of, of, of issues that was going on, we should have helped them. You know, it was without water, and there's going to be others going to be without water. And, 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 you know, the individuals lost out all the way around. That's just my opinion. And I understand why we voted the way we did. But I hope this issue doesn't die. Goldman, I want to express a, an apology from this board member. I hope good fortune come to you and your your neighbors out there. It's, it's well, that's your business, but it's motion carried four to one. <clears throat> Main Street Group. <laughs> So we're here on behalf of Main Street, and what she's handing you guys is uh, a flyer we made up for the uh, community cleanup day we plan to do in August. And then if you'll flip it over, um, there's some items on the back that we just wanted to ask your approval, and a couple items that we wanted to ask of the town. Um, so if you want to look over those and let us know if you have any questions.
Kevin, do you have a copy of this? <coughs> so do you have any comments that you like to share? Yep. I'll show you. Oh. Okay. How many volunteers do you have so far? Do you know? Um, we're not sure yet. Not sure. Um, usually as much as I expect for the operation serve that Centerville Church does every year, because that's kind of what we're replacing it with this year. I would entertain them. if you don't have any other comments, a motion on. Well, we got Kevin's on especially number three there. Action to be requested by the town of Centerville. Do you have any comments on any of those? We might ask any other board member as well. Go ahead. I really don't want to see a move to the center of the park. It's going to be harder to pick up and maintain in the center of the park. The, yeah. the trash containers? Yeah. No, this is from the center of downtown to the park. It doesn't say the center of the yeah. park. Yeah, uh, well, that's what I'm going to comment on, but I'll go ahead. We have one at the attorney's office. We have one at the park. There's a few at the park, isn't there? You have one between the bank and the Brown Joe. Yeah. Do we and use this? I know that I've heard from people at the bank and at the Brown Joe that people will throw their trash in that instead on the ground and that you guys have been keeping it clean and they appreciate that. And that was uh, somebody that was a customer at the bank and somebody that, or, or Sherry, that owns the Brown Jug. So they appreciate that can there. This suggestion came from Rex and Kyle, who both work and live. Oh, sorry. Uh, the suggestion of moving the trash cans came from Rex and Kyle, who were, as you know, downtown all the time. Yeah. And they see that the park needs them worse than downtown. It's not that they don't want trash cans downtown, they do, but the usage is more at the park. Uh, would you support that, Gary? Absolutely. Did you see the what park? about the thought of maybe a couple more containers down there? Yeah. And not removing the ones from downtown. Or have them checked on a daily basis. Okay, you're saying well, you're, you're you don't want to pull the trash track? truck out for just checking that. Yeah. Well, the trash truck's every day. I no, it's not. It didn't? No. What day is it? Tuesday. Thursdays is just dumpsters, but Tuesday it doesn't run. Would it be more There's profitable no. to put just new dumpsters down there? Well, or trash, trash cans. trash cans. nicer than dumpsters. Yeah, yeah I mean, trash. I think you could eliminate a lot of the problem if they're just checked more often. Um, yeah, what they're thinking is, is they would like to see some down at the park as well, maybe. Let's get park, is the park yeah, are they saying they're a nuisance uptown, or are they saying that they I wanted they the park as well? Not necessarily that they were a nuisance downtown, just they didn't think they got used as often downtown. And they would at the park. Yeah. Right. And the attendance at the park is steadily growing, so. We just get a couple new dumpster through. Trash can put that in. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know what they would cost to get something like that, but. Well, remember, our funding for the park is. There is no funding. <laughs> Unless you put funding in the park, there is no funding for the park. Well, how much a trash can will cost? $200 a piece, $300 a piece. What? It depends on the size of the can you want to get. Um, <laughs> what well, the wood enclosures that are in the park now, who made those? Those aren't sharp stores. I'm sure they're not 50 bucks a piece. I was <laughs> in town chili for some time ago. Yeah. Oh, I, I imagine we could make more. Um, a suggestion would be that we see if somebody, we're going to have some good, competent help for this project. Maybe somebody can make more. And we're going to be painting all of them so old and new would look the same. Mm -hmm. So, but. But you're saying you want to keep the four downtown? Is that, that I think so. Yeah, I think so. And that will provide to additional in, in some manner. Okay. What kind of trash cans are there now? I mean, they're in the containers, right? 
So you get a trash can for 50 bucks as long as we put it in a wooden container. I'm guessing, I don't know. I have a question about number two. Is there any specialty restrictions on the town park sign? I know there's the restrictions that are on the new sign for the caboose, but there's certain things that have to be done with it. So I don't know if there's anything that was set on that one. Yeah, we hope he'd be here tonight. And he had already told Sherry that he had to prove anything. We're not quite ready. To. Right. I just didn't know if, if that had anything that anybody would know. Oh, yeah. Just because so I know the one sign does have specialties with it, so we can't just take it and do whatever. Which, which sign? The one for the caboose that was just oh, put in. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't know if they had done something like that with that sign. That it has to be the same size. I don't know. We're still haven't connected yet with eight plus. Of course, we're not working with them. I'm not sure yet what material will be or anything. Just know that the sign that's there, you know, on the west side by by Morton, is falling apart. Can you help? So I get a question on number four. So is is our equipment down there damaged to the point where somebody could get hurt? Yes. Then we really need to take it out of commission then. That's my problem. Really, I don't think it's even technically open. He just said that the traffic was getting more and more down there. Well, I know, but I'm there. It's open. It's open. Yeah. For one thing, yeah. to dismantle that, what they call the merry-go-round, mm -hmm. can't be done for rest like. Can't just go down there with some wrenches mm -hmm. and hammers and start tearing it apart because there's more underneath it than what your eyes I can imagine. Because there's a uh, there's a gearbox down there with a spring load in it, right? And the whole mechanism has fell down. Whether that's a bearing control problem or what, I don't know. But we need to find out where it came from and maybe maybe give some kind of attention to them and ask them what can be done. So in the meantime, now that we know that this this piece of equipment is damaged, if somebody goes down there and try to play on and they get hurt. It's, a, it's down liable for that. And now that we've had an open meeting um, going live, you understand what I'm trying to say? Well, there's a definite, definite uh, chance somebody could get their fingers pinched on it. Yeah. So, so until we get it fixed, we need to take it out of commission. Yeah. So we can yeah. tape it off. Yeah, tape it off or put a warning sign or something just to protect us. Protect us or something. You're not air caution tape or something like that. I mean, kids are going to do what they're going to do, but if, they're, if, we, if you know, something's posted, at least at that point, we're... Uh, uh, well, you understand there's no way of permitting can get through in time for them to paint the bridge on board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it's a little bit of a problem. Does it put paint on it? No. I get EPA approval. We're in a stream, <laughs> so I damn the EPA. Oh, you know how awful it looks. Pieces of concrete falling out. Well, we <coughs> that is a future project. Would sometime. that be something that maybe they could start the permitting process and when it's done, gather a group of people to work on it? Maybe yes. as a secondary day? If you're willing to go through the process, I have no idea. <laughs> you know, paint seems easy. I can just get out and brush and go, but not well, so. I've been and they and everybody have their own little rules for such events. <laughs> them holding their event on the 8th of August and we apparently are not approving everything on this list due to there's some questions about certain things so 
I don't know what you're looking for emotionally on there, Dan. Well, we know that you know, we, need to, we don't want to move the trash can from Main Street. You know, we need to uh, drop off that uh, playground equipment. We know we can't paint underneath the, and paint the bridge. And the uh, sign, since we're replacing uh, the same sign, I don't think there's any issue there. Uh, if you were making it bigger, you know, making it taller and so forth, then we'd have to, you know, change Well, it says to... newly designed sign. We plan made to keep the so. side posts that are there now right. and just take out the wooden sign in the middle but keep it the same dimensions and everything. Yeah. Just so that, the sign. Because our sign ordinance, all it is is for height and size. Okay. So I don't think you're in. I'll double check with Gene, but I don't think that's the issue right now. Playground mulch. Do we have mulch, Kevin, that we can use? No, we have no crude mulch. Okay, well. That's what has to be, have to be treated. treated. Yeah. Uh, like a special crude mulch, treated. too? For playgrounds, not yeah. just. Wasn't that donated from somebody before? Yes. Do we remember who? <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I can look back and see. If we can find that out and let them know, maybe we can uh, bark up the same tree and maybe hopefully get the same response. Huh? Reed Foundation, maybe. Okay. They do a lot of stuff like that. I think they were both the sun in that package. Mm -hmm. Somebody said RPL. Yeah, RPL was really involved that time. Was it? Yeah. Oh. So those are, those are avenues maybe you can look at as that. The flagpole, the flagpole pad. So that's not an issue. The trash cans we've discussed about leaving, leaving the ones up down and acquiring maybe a couple more for down there. Maybe that'll lessen the trash instead of people throwing it on the ground. Um, and then the broken playground equipment. James said it's definitely a risk, and it is. So who who needs to look to head that up to get that? to seek out a professional. On the repair? Yes. Um, I mean, somebody's going to have to take, take the bull by the horns. And, I mean, who, who's going to do that? That'd be something Kevin, Kevin would do? Kevin, or? I mean, Kevin, you can I reach out and touch. Okay. I can reach out if you're going to have to find it. Well, I, I understand. Yeah. Whether it's replaced or just the proper way to, I don't want it to be removed and, and somebody get hurt while they're removing it either. We so. don't I'd say it's normal wear and tear. Yeah, car keys. That thing is so popular. Yeah. My, my grandkid, my grandson goes straight. I mean, I don't know what a replacement it costs. You're going to cost nine hundred dollars. You're going to cost nine thousand dollars. I don't know. I remember right when the ground, the whole playground was around sixty thousand. How much? No, I think 60, it was forty-five thousand, but they raised everything, but like six yeah. or seven thousand. Once we get across on that, we can maybe see somebody will. Okay. So I guess we're agreeing to some things and some things not what our discussion is here tonight. I'll make a motion we allow them to go ahead and proceed, minus the things that we just mentioned. Okay. Got a motion by Jane to allow them to go ahead and proceed, except for the items that we just spoke of. Uh, Specifically, do not paint the, 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 the bridge. Right. Do not move, and remove the trash cans. And the uh, rope off the playground equipment and one other. Uh, when you talked about we can't paint without permission, will that include the graffiti in the tunnel? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would second yeah. that motion. What okay. was the other part? Go ahead. Can we pressure wash that? Yeah. The, the bridge is crumbling so bad. I really don't want to put that on okay. the so I, I understand. I'm just asking a question as an alternative to painting. I mean, you can literally walk up to it and pick it apart. What were the three items again? I have trash can and I have rope off the Playground equipment. Playground equipment. Well, just the merry-go-round, right? Very Is that okay? Very good. Thank you. And then uh, the uh, bridge. 
painting. And then you guys can reach out to some of these people who have been suggested about malt. Yeah. And, and, and um, what about the flagpole? Are you okay? There's three flagpoles in the park. You're okay with taking the one down? The one that's in such bad shape? That's point. Is that the main one? What is the one right on, right on the front. There's a uh, please. Uh, I'm waiting. Yeah. Yeah, right in the very front. There's still one at the Royal Road Memorial, and there's one right, right behind the Tom Williams Memorial. Yeah. So the memorial stone would still be there. I never knew Tom Williams. Is there going to be somebody? He was, our, happy? he was our police chief. Yeah. Here in Centerville. So when you say it's in bad shape, what what it's do you mean? The bottom, the, yeah, the bottom is busted. Of the metal itself, or just yeah. the tube? Oh. The tube is cracked, down. probably four inch crack. Yeah, it needs to come down. Yeah, I'd put that in the motion to remove yeah. that black bolt. Yeah. You want me to repeat it? Well, so have the day, have the have the mm -hmm. uh, cleaning day, <coughs> minus the items specifically. Trash cans, painting the bridge, roping off the merry-go-round. Everything else is okay. Mm -hmm. Now we're approving the rain day too. Yeah, just we're approving uh, yeah. August the eighth for the initial date, and the rain date would be August the fifteenth. If you would like to paint some graffiti on the bridge and jump out the design, I wouldn't know anything about it. <laughs> 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 the bank will sell it. Unless the police chief finds you doing that, you're in trouble. <laughs> 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 so we need a second. Yeah, will you call the roll? Wait, Wait a minute. Oh, second. No, we can get a second. Yeah. You second I would second it. Providing that we keep Kevin in the loop on all of us. Yeah. Do I need to put that in the motion or is that just automatic? I put it in the motion. Um, yeah. That please. way it's I'm amending. I'm amending it. Contact Kevin and I'll discuss. And then, Kevin, if you could keep us all abreast of what's going on as well, please. Thank you. <laughs> That's just a verbal action. Ready? Are you ready? Call the roll, please. Dan Wandersee? Aye. Gary Holbert? Aye. Jack Boddicker? Aye. Mark Tucker? Aye. James Bullen? Aye. All ayes, no nays. Okay, motion carried. Can I just say a thank very much? Because you're fully aware that Main Street had such big dreams and visions. And then the virus. And Grant Manning has shot all the pieces, as you well know. And we decided this work day is something we could do. It takes more sweat equity than money. So thanks for supporting. Thank you. What do you, Thank you. What do you guys do? Good. Yes. Bill? No. Archway Days information update. Okay. It, he just. Contacted me yesterday and asked if he could just give you guys an update. And this is strictly an update, so all you gotta do is listen. Um, everybody should have in their emails the schedule of events for Archway Days. We are moving forward, barring any other major issues with the state and/or the county. We are going to have Archway Days this year. Uh, it's going to happen on August 21st and 22nd. Um, the theme for this year, um, as we have been working closely with our partners uh, with the train caboose is trains. So uh, we plan to have the train caboose dedication during Archway Days. We've got that on our agendas. You all should have copies of that in your emails. I have paper copies if anybody would like an extra paper copy. Um, we've gone away from, uh, or we've gone back to showing a movie. So we'll have an outdoor movie. Uh, we're going to show the movie Unstoppable, which is a train themed movie. Um, we are we're changing up what we're doing this year because of the coronavirus. We're, we're going away from the bounce house type scenario and we're going to go to a 
a large slide, something that can be cleaned regularly, uh, relatively easy. And then we're going to have some kids' games, um, whack-a-mole, speed pitch, and basketball connect four. Um, we're also going to bring back the rock wall. So these are all things that people can enjoy, that people can, can play on, that can be easily wiped down, easily cleaned, and not um, you know, as a precaution to the public. Um, we're still going to have our car show. Uh, it's going to happen on Friday night. And uh, we're going to have the parade on Saturday. Now, the addition to the parade this year is that we're going to have a float competition. Trains is our theme. So if any community event, uh, community uh, organizations want to get involved and build a float and enter in the parade, there are cash prizes for um, the best float, and it will be judged during the parade. Uh, we're going to do the taser demonstration again this year. We've got volunteers. We've been working with Ed, and uh, you know he's all on board with that. We're also doing the cookies with the cop event like we've done for the past several years. Um, we have made some modifications for public safety. Um, we are spreading our vendors out so they're not so tightly packed together. That does limit the vendors that we can have um, and for that, we're kind of going to expand across the street into the, the area north of Walter and Hawkins there, west of, of Morton. Uh, we're going to put some vendors in there so that we're spread out a little bit further. Um, we're encouraging all of our vendors to um, kind of monitor social distancing at their own booths and encouraging them to wear masks when they're dealing with the public and to sanitize and wipe down their, their own stations. Um, whether it's food or craft vendor or direct sales vendor. Um, we plan to wear masks for the entire event, being the staff and the volunteers of the event, um, as a public safety precaution. We're also bringing in extra hand washing stations, and we will have sanitation and sanitizing stations all around the event this year to help people to stay safe and, and clean and sanitized throughout the event. Um, we are going to have um, a lot of bands coming in this year. We've got three or four uh, bands that are still going to be performing. Um, so all of the, the stuff that you see on the agenda is going to happen. Um, flyers should be putting up around town this week so that everybody can kind of see what's going on. And uh, we've been working closely with, uh, with Kevin on the uh, – sign that's going to go across 40. There'll be a banner across 40 advertising our trade days. But we're really excited and we're glad that we can put on the event, barring any future problems with uh, COVID-19. So, thank you. I'd like to make a motion. Um, that we give you and Dan the authority, since you've been involved with the COVID in the state level, that if you hear something that comes through, that you have the authority to um, shut it down if need be or whatever. You understand what I'm trying to say? That way we don't have to meet and decide or whatever. You putting that in a form? Yeah, I think we need to you work with the police department or whatever. Yeah, that I way there's no... My personal opinion, you know, I am a volunteer fireman as well, that that decision needs to be between fire, police, and the town. Um, and that would fall, for the archway days, that would fall under our emergency plan. And we defer completely to the police, fire, and obviously the town's emergency plan as well. So that's kind of already in play, but obviously this would be a formal setting to do it. But, well, I was just only saying that because you're in contact all the time with, with the state level, whether so you can contact fire and police or whatever. I think it's going to fall under the Wayne County Health Department. Okay. Because they'll come over and go mm -hmm. free inspections before they're even allowed to open up. Okay. Something happens, they do the one constructing out of the state. Just make sure. Shut down or whatever that would take place. Okay. What you enough. could do in your motion is just that I would be the contact and then make the decision and let everybody else on the board aware of Absolutely. That's, that's fine. That would be, you know, maybe a better motion for that because they would have the rule. But I'd, I'd be contacted. Okay. As a, are you, Ed, you okay with that, Dennis? Yes. Um, yes, that's one motion. Okay. What he just said. Do I have a second <laughs> on that? Oh, I'll second. Uh, I have a second by Mark. Will you call the rule, please? So I have allow Wondersy to be contact for Archway Day's information. Any, Is that, any of that? 
COVID. COVID okay, uh, for COVID, our <coughs> COVID information. Does then that I'll, sound good? Then I'll that pass all right? on to the council and, and we'll pass on information. That I'd be the direct contact. We don't know what's going to happen next week. No. No, unfortunately. Okay, may I reread that one more time? Yes, sir. Allow Dan Wandersee to be contact for the, uh, the main contact for Archway Days, COVID information, and we'll pass info to council. For the council. And we'll pass info to council. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. And Mark second. <coughs> okay. Sorry. Roll, Dan Wandersee? Aye. Gary Holbert? Aye. Jack Bodiker? Aye. Mark Tucker? Aye. James Bullen? Aye. All ayes, no nays. Motion carried. Mr. President? Yes. Bill, we have the dunk tank this year? We are not. Okay. He was going to volunteer. <laughs> well, I would volunteer if it was two years ago. Last year's dunk tank was rather strenuous of getting in and out. It was more of a safety hazard than it was a, um, and I don't know what your concerns there are, but I guess one person gets in the water, the next person gets in the water, that's yeah. happened. So, yeah. but that was the We can raise money by paying the council. Holy yeah. crap. Let's take, let's take a vote on that. <laughs> oh. Who gets saved? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> okay. You got anything on the building commission? Police department. I want to see my report. Uh, one thing I have is we're still taking applications for our opening, and that's I had it scheduled in this Friday. We're not getting a whole lot of response. That really doesn't surprise me right now. But uh, the status of the world right now, nobody wants to be a police officer saying right. Uh, we'd like to also let y'all know if you didn't see me come in, our new message board has arrived. It got about five fifteen this afternoon. So I went hooked it up, brought it out, and after the council meeting, everybody wants to look at it. I still don't know how to operate it all yet, but I just got it. I've got a lot of software I've got to look into, but. I can flip it on and show you the gadgets. That'd be interesting. Uh, just one thing. Um, who's responsible for the traffic control detouring people in this project? Are you or? I'm going to go between the, okay. the cooling. Well, the other day they were directing them down Plum Street. Plum Street's fucked Locked. off. Yeah. So we're turning. I don't going, know who was directing them down. One of the police officers was. We was, had big, huge trucks trying yeah. to come down Plum Street, and they really couldn't go left because that was blocked. They couldn't they, go straight because that's They must have been going around the barricade because we've had a road closed barricade at Water Street. You know what I'm saying? Is Plum, men were down Crown Creek. He sent them down Plum Street. Yeah, he sent them down Plum Street. He no. sent them down Third. Was it Third? I don't know. Fourth or, it was Third and Street. And they were all making Wonderful. a left and they were driving over the dirt. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. I, anyway, I just wanted to. The guys were trying to get in there and get their scoops and move things over. That's the first I heard of that. Yeah. People yeah. Were, well, I only know because I live on Plum Street. I'm like, yeah. There was like a half semi went over that that dirt, and I'm thinking, well, oh, yeah, the one is, well, yeah, there was one yeah. semi tried to go down through there. Yeah, I'm just kind of short handed, so I've been using the utilizing officers well, from the sheriff's department, yeah. from Cambridge City, from Pakistan, right? So, right. I'm not complaining, I'm just, sure to on yeah. we need to do, but. it's kind of scary when you see them coming down, yeah, especially when they there was one car that actually was like this mm -hmm. speeding over them at the end of the road. You think they'd know better. Well, they didn't know what to do. They had a whole. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. But they had a whole line of traffic down through there. Mm -hmm. So it was during when when they were doing. They were well, a semi yeah, was in there. It was going one lane. Yeah. Both well, that, lanes. That certainly sits on the interstate at the same time. Oh this yeah. Is going on or whatever. Yeah. That traffic through here too. It's so. really hard. It's just something we we'll just have to deal with the best we can. But you know, we should be sending trucks down those streets. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it was a mistake. I just, thanks. I did. I will say this. I watched a guy literally had a tra trailer and had a, um, what do you call it? A, a house, your backyard building on the back of it. Hit every mailbox with Plum Street. Everyone, I'm bam, bam, bam. And just looked out his window and just smiled and kept going. Wow. Every one of them. I'll say I, I did. 
uh, last Thursday on 40, and I was surprised at the number of people, I would say between 30 and 40 people that would stop, and some of them was actually handing bottles of water out to us. And I mean, I, you know, it was it was refreshing that they were they were doing that. And yeah. Thanking you. Uh, they had truck drivers, you know, give a little toot and a wave, and they went through. And it's kind of surprising with everything going on, but yeah. They, they it's always good. Yeah, but you don't have anything in the general. I will back up to the minutes. And has everyone gone over the minutes for the council meeting that was on Tuesday, June the 9th, 2020? <coughs> Are there any additions or corrections to those? If not, I would entertain a motion. So move. And a motion by James to accept those. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Jack. Will you call the roll, please? Dan Wandersee? Aye. Gary Holbert? Aye. Jack Boddicker? Aye. Mark Tucker? Aye. James Bullen? Aye. All eyes, no nays. We have minutes for the work session on Tuesday, June the 30th, 2020. Uh, are there any additions or corrections to those? If not, I would entertain a motion on accepting those. So moved. I have a motion by James. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Mark. All those in favor? I'll oh, call the roll, please. Sorry. Dan Wandersee? Aye. Gary Holbert? Aye. Jack Boddicker? Aye. Mark Tucker? Aye. James Bullen? Aye. All ayes, no nays. Also, I would like to uh, thank the uh, Youth League for the fireworks that they did Saturday. Uh, in spite of when after the rain come through, there was a lot of people over here to watch fireworks. They put on a good half hour, you know, display, and uh, you know, thank them for doing that for the community. Street park. Where we at on our leave back? I can't wait to see that bad boy. Um, on the leave back, we are waiting on the check to be wired to them once they have it. We'll arrange for it to be shipped down and give them the down pay. Mm -hmm. Good. We're not that far out. Good. Cut a tree down, shake some leaves off of it. <laughs> well, I had a call today. The man walked the leaf back to pick up some leaves in the ship. We've been as time allows. We're upgrading some of the warning signs. And pretty much it to the street. Oh, I didn't. I don't have anything for you. I meant to say something. Um, Kyle talked to me the other day uh, over lunch and asked how long we were going to keep the signs in front of these businesses um, down there so there's no far parking um, on Main Street. So you're just trying to get an idea. We just posted some more today. Okay. We actually went uh, further east of 4th Street today on both sides of the street. It's. Uh, well, I've been told we're going to be starting a little bit more on 40 again tomorrow. So it's going to be... Week, month? He was just trying to, trying to get an idea. Hopefully next week might be the end of that part. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Week, two weeks. Okay. They should be pushed out and challenged. You want me to ask? I don't come back right? around when they start repairing, yeah, the, repairing the street and do the main hookup, right? Um, once we get the hookups done and it settles, they will start repairing the shirts. And 40 will be one of the first to be restored. Sure. He was just wondering, so, you know. We're going west here. Yeah. So that's going to be coming up here. That's all I got. One of the fire. Oh, while we're at it, why don't we start with the water department? Yeah, because you got a lot to say there. Maybe we'll make the dentist finish up. Well, everything's going smooth, no problems. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> um, we did have a water main break last week. Got it prepared. Um, this is major leak, actually. And what we come to find out once we took the section out, 
the epoxy used to seal that back in the fifth piece when it was put in, they assumed that once the epoxy reached a growth point, it stopped. With today's technology, they've learned this epoxy keeps growing at a minimal rate over time. And they just grew till it busted the bell out and split the pot. Mm. I, I never knew that until that time, but it does happen, I guess. Um, we're flushing hydrants, exercising valves, and I know we've got three valves leaking here in town. Mm -hmm. um, Got the one scheduled. I'm waiting on the project to end on Poplar to schedule that replacement because I don't want to interfere with that my closing one of them. And the other valve leaking will be replaced in the water main project. But as we start exercising the valves, we're going to run into more and more that are going to start leaking because they've sat for so many years without being exercised. And we've been doing equipment maintenance. The water project is on schedule, a little different than the original schedule, but given some of the timing, we're trying to get the majors out of the way before school starts and archway days actually rolls in the best of our ability. And I emailed you all a copy of the proposal for a water main run out for the Christian Church to Brown Creek. Um, I hope you've all had time to review it. Um, I did a preliminary estimate, gave it to the church, Gene talked with the church, and they agreed upon paying $186,000. Um, we will have some minor expenses with this. We've got two connections for sure that will go in, possibly two house lines. And I am upsizing from their minimum requirement to a 10 inch so when further development comes along, we can handle development out there without tearing that up and putting the 10 inch in. Yes. It's going to be about five grand or something like that, or the, the valve, the expansion size of the valve. Um, the valves will be a little cheaper because we'll be able to shut them down. And if you would like to put a change order in on the water project, we can eliminate a lot of the engineering expense as far as uh, pre-bid and bidding documents and everything. And that's a decision you guys will have to make. The majority of the money will be available from the church. We'll just... I'll make a motion that you oversee that work order change. And a motion by Jack to have Kevin oversee and put in that change order. And that'd be a 10 inch pipe, so what you're saying? It will be. Yeah, it will be. Um, the church only needs a six inch to actually provide what they need for their facility. But looking into the future and development up there, and actually, I'd like to loop in Winding Brook so we have a full loop there sometime in the future as well. The so win win in the end run. Yeah, I think it'll be a win win for us if the church willing to pay what it costs for their equipment. I have a second by Gary. And that was who first? Who, who made Jack. the motion? Jack. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Can you call the roll, please. Dan Wandersee. Aye. Gary Holbert. Aye. Jack Boddicker. Aye. Mark Tucker. Aye. James Bolin. Aye. All eyes, no nays. I will have to get with Kent and Kerry Williams to confirm the bill allowed this change order. Go through individually. I don't see a problem with it. They're going to be there anyway, replacing the damage. They're coming almost down the Crown Creek anyway, aren't they? Um, no, not no. the original design. That would have stayed the old block. 
gonna have a water client up in the going uh, south. So we'll just put a T in, put the new 10 inch and run our 10 inch. We are gonna bore under Crown Creek itself, but it'll be a road cut across the river. That's all I have. Um, I guess I do have one more thing. A motion for Dan to sign the agreement with Clock Mueller for Dan Schmidt. I make that motion. You got a motion by Mark to allow me to sign the agreement with Clock Mueller on that project. Do I have a second? Sure. I have a second by James. And that's the Lock Mueller agreement for the church expansion project. Gosh, okay. I'm, di I'm just going to add church expansion project so we know which Lock Mueller it goes with. I, is that okay? Oh, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that way there's no confusion. And let's see, what? I sign Lock Mueller for church expansion. Okay. And who was second? I did. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Trying to get it all written down really quick. Okay. All the roll, please. Dan Wandersee. Aye. Gary Holbert. Aye. Jack Boddicker. Aye. Mark Tucker. Aye. James Bullen. Aye. All eyes, no nays. <coughs> this weekend, uh, helping with traffic and bikes on that, um, and then uh, we get the following weekend. We also are finishing up our uh, first responder class. They are going to be doing their testing this coming weekend. Um, the gentleman did come down from first attack, take all the measurements and stuff on our tank truck conversion. Um, He's saying it'll probably take them three weeks or so to get the tank made. Um, and then when it, it's ready to go on, then he will let us know and we'll get the truck up to him so he can start taking off the old tank and stuff and getting everything switched over. So. And that would take about approximately how long would it be? Approximately a month if everything goes the way he wants. From the time he gets over there. We made a few minor revisions, but nothing that's going to be in high dollar stuff. So, uh, other than that, I can't think of anything else. Um, I just want to say, on behalf of myself, especially, uh, I was on vacation last week and down by Myrtle Beach. I ran up along the incident. Um, glad I wasn't 30 seconds earlier. A vehicle ran in the back of a working highway truck mowing crew. Uh, fortunately, nobody was harmed. You've got our police departments and our fire departments going out here on I-70 and we have a bad incident and they're putting their, their lives at risk every time they go out. Um, also, we had a, a bad structure home fire over the weekend over in the touch law position that Put our department here, the Central Fire Department and Richmond Fire Department, jeopardy trying to trying to save that structure, which was not savable. Um, and fortunately, no lives were lost in that. So, Dennis, from myself, and I'm sure this community, Ed, you guys are doing a heck of a job. And if anybody, I really appreciate what you're doing every day for me. Me too. Um, I had I had a, a, a pedestrian approach me last Friday about this water main break in front of the church, and I would just like to to uh, have a little bit more coming home with that that you just said. But uh, the response that that I got from Kevin and the assistant manager of the police department, the fire department, 
uh, they handled this thing so great that at least we didn't run out of water because it was a major, major break. That's all. Yeah, that's the first one to call him, and I know the guy that called me won't call me unless something's really bad. And you're in Carolina, and I get a phone call. We got water in the car. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm in North Carolina coming through, and 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 when I know when this guy calls me, he knows I was on vacation, and then I call him, and he said I was the first of many to give you a call. And your guys are out there just like that mowing highway crew, man. I say prayers for them guys doing the trash pickup and all that stuff all the time. You you guys are doing a hell of a job too. Which one is one? What have we got on the trash rate study? Uh, I sent that. I sent the information to you guys. Um, gosh, been the twenty sixth is when I, uh, we got the information, July 6th, I'm sorry, July 6th. And he sent everything in, the fee to do another rate study. They would take not only the information that we have, but they would update it with more current, more current information. And the total cost for that would be $8,500 that would do the, in a nutshell, analysis of costs, revenues, costs and revenues, rate analysis, which would analyze the historical recorded financial information for 12 months, which is what it currently does, but they would update the information. Detail from available records of schedule of flow of funds for the past three years, operation and maintenance, debt service, amount of revenues, purpose of determining trends, and requirements for expenditures and revenues for improvements to the department property and plants and it would analyze the expenses in the test year as well as analyze the accounts invoices pertinent documents they would obtain information to make sure that everything that they have they would make appropriate adjustments to cash operating expenses any additional labor that might be included or power costs that might come up chemical costs that may come down the road if there's things that may change um, they would have a, they would check schedule a monthly revenue check to look at everything so they would test month by month to make sure that everything was where we need it to be then they would prepare amortization schedules of presently outstanding funded debt which there is no outstanding at this point but there will be um, because you'll have to get a truck and then obtain information from the rate ordinance tariffs and bond ordinances now in effect they would suggest fee adjustments for trash services as may be considered necessary to meet the estimated future annual revenue requirements. Um, they would assist in the development of a capital improvement program and determine alternative financial programs leading to the obtaining of funds necessary to meet the capital improvement requirements through funds now available and or future revenues of the system and or use of debt financing. And they would provide alternate um, Estimates of future annual revenue requirements for consideration by the client, which is the town. And this is this is a three-year. Uh, You're going to look three, at look at three years. Mm -hmm. And it's eighty-five hundred dollars to do the rate. Study. I don't think we have a choice but to undergo this. So I make a motion to go ahead with this. Got a motion by Gary to go ahead with the rate study. Do I have a second? Sorry. I have a second by James. And have you sign? That'd be fine. How long would it take them to do this? Uh, I don't think it's very long. I think it's a couple weeks. Because so we they have a lot of the information, they're just going to be updating information. That's Baker Hill, right? Mm -hmm. so we should have something probably by the next meeting, possibly. Well, that'd be two weeks. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. maybe. We well, it's by the council meeting, probably. Meeting. probably. Not the work session, but okay. probably the council yeah, meeting. For the, okay, for the meeting. I'll just try to get it. Yeah. <laughs> so move forward with the rate study and have Wonder C sign? Yes. With Baker Tilly. I have a second by James. 
We call the roll, please. Dan Wandersee? Aye. Gary Holbert? Aye. Jack Boddicker? Aye. Mark Tucker? Aye. James Bullen? Aye. All ayes, no nays. Motion carried. Uh, I'm running that a little bit to call the sewer plant. Um, we've had a couple of machines go down. One is repaired. The other one is over 30 years old. They don't even make parts anymore. So we did run a load there until we can get some cost figures in and replace that machine. Which machine is that? Um, it's one of the testing machines for the uh, nitrate. We shipped it to them to look at, and they kind of sent us a <laughs> um, Still moving along with sewer line jetting. Get pretty good handle on that this year. Stormwater project. They laid the catch basin in on the east side and have the curb ramps for it today. So as soon as that cures, I'm hoping my milestone will be in and paid and we can have the final walkthrough and close this project out. Did we get a notice for a letter from Okra? I have not received one yet. Hopefully that goes through. All I've had so far is just a you know, verbal. Uh, and I know they were supposed to have completed by the 11th. Here we are, day the 14th. So I don't know. I know the catch basin cost us about three days. It was an engineering oversight. It had to go in the drain when we stopped. We were just wasting our time with that. That's all I got, unless you got anything for me. Well, there's no turning back on that project at this right. point. No, not at this point. Thank you. The 313 East Plum Street adjustment. Uh, that was uploaded and uh, this was a request from a customer at the time of filling their pool. The Centerville office was closed for answering questions about filling a pool, and he didn't see any town ordinance for what or whose water meter could be used for filling the pool. Um, so he borrowed his neighbors, and he took pictures before and after, and those are what uploaded. Um, so he's requesting that he get an adjustment on his bill. And is there any way that we can uh, just put a little little information box down at the end of our utility bill um, stating that we have to have a um, physical person down there to okay that instead of pictures? Because this is for and, filling a pool. Right, right. He used his neighbor's meter. Right. But we're, we're going by pictures again. We right, just, but we, 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 we tell all the customers don't share your meter because that is specifically to your house. Sure. And that's so what it, we can't verify. Uh, right. So technically, this was his neighbor's meter. It should come off his neighbor's bill. We, we can't do that. <laughs> but if we could put something on that utility bill. We could put a uh, line. We put a line that says something about coming in to get a, a summer meter. But You're out of summer meters. No, we have some, we, we have more. People can purchase okay. them or they can check them out. But because of the, the amount of people that we've had at home not going to the pool, not doing any of that, we've had a huge amount of people requesting. And I think we only have six. I think we have six for checkout. I'm just not too yeah. fuzzy with this picture thing. That's, uh, we don't know. To me, uh, yeah, we didn't. We didn't allow one from before, but just out of curiosity, what kind of money are you looking at, or did you even figure? We didn't even figure it. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, I mean, we could figure a dollar amount, but then no, that's you know. that's, that's the office is open for regular business hours. If yeah. They pick one up at any time. Or they could have put their name in, have a waiting <laughs> list for people. So. 
Well, no other information we just heard. I make a motion that we uh, dismiss that claim right here. Yeah, I have a motion by Gary to reject that claim. Do I have a second? Sorry. I have a second by James. Before the roll, please. Dan Wandersee? Aye. Gary Holbert? Aye. Jack Boddicker? Aye. Mark Tucker? Aye. James Bullen? Aye. All ayes, no nays. And as a side note, uh, for anybody who does move in, we give them a packet of information that has that in it. And it's also online. So we Good. try to we try to get the information out there for everybody. Good. So anything else? Our coal replacement on one of the hottest days of the year actually went very well. We finished an hour short of our estimate, so we were able to get them on a little earlier. When they started working on the coal, we did come to realize the coal was completely rotten and Two drops were all that was hold. So, hmm. It was a little inconvenient for some of the residents. We tried to line them as much as we could. And like I said, they were able to do it under the estimated time. So I feel that all went very well. We had a power outage this month, weather related and we were animal related. They were all very short term. And was still in town replacing our poles as per the agreement with replacing street lights as needed. And I'm still awaiting a cost estimate on a week for the north end. Uh, I have a couple residents request estimates for changes of service and they've all been taken care of. I just got the last one today, but they talked properly I think. just waiting for Decision from then on that. So I got under your bucket. Did you hear anything more about the ambassador? No, I had a call. I had a call. Okay. Uh, Valerie called and was through the process to you know, file and sent through right. to uh, you know, get some money from the EEC. And I think she's going to try to come at our work session and talk to us about activating it. Uh, she's got some ideas and she was, and so I think she's planning on coming okay. and uh, addressing that at the end of the term work session. Uh, and then the defined uh, way signs or way signs. I have not seen that. No, so uh, I'll, I will get that to you yeah. tomorrow. It, it's uh, it's no, pretty straightforward. Pretty much go with what they have, but instead of curving, instead of it would be straight. The font may be just a little different, but not that much. Yeah. They can handle it. Do we have Should locations? We thought it out where we want to put these? Yeah, I, I have no idea on that. Yeah, we, yeah. we don't get. Uh, because I had to get you know, approval on the number and then where they go and what's going to be put on those is yet to be. Yeah, I have no idea how to go about that. I'm sure Main Street, Centerville will be involved somewhat. And and, yeah, because it's, it's actually more for them than it is anything else. But yeah, and you pretty much know Centerville Road, you know, north and south. Yeah. 40 east and west. Uh, yes. How many signs were there? Five or two signs? Ten with two signs? Was, I think there were ten. Ten signs, but they call it 20 because you okay. do front and back. <coughs> so both, so you can see yeah. that both directions. 20 total signs, 10 different locations. That's actually 10 different signs. But no, we have not. Okay. Even got that far. So, do you want to put that on there for the next meeting just to get another update? Okay. Or, yeah. On the work session? Yeah. And I think that's it for a record. 
So what's the time frame and what is to get that completed? Are we, are we just, just, I mean. I don't know how long it will take them to even make them. Okay. Uh, I didn't know, I mean. Yeah. They, uh, My understanding, this is input's program and we're just providing program. information and for okay. 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 They, they do this, uh, I think they did one in Richmond. You know, if you look on the east side, they got some down in the depot. District. Okay. And, uh, it's they just put up up to ten thousand uh, dollars okay. and doing that and anything over that you know you cover uh, they have their own uh, people that make these you know, strictly for them and then they that's including installing them to so wherever we decide we don't have to do nothing they come in and put them up okay that's good to know but now what the, what the lead time is, we're still doing on that time. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just got information today and I uploaded it for you guys to look at for a new phone system that we've been talking about. I uploaded it into council information this afternoon because he didn't get it to me until like early this morning. Um, Remember we had talked about when we went from Frontier and Comcast into Comcast so that we could be more in line and have everybody together. At some point we would be able to connect all the buildings. This new phone system would do that. It would be um, handsets that we would be able to do um, extension dialing to the different buildings, to the different, right now we actually just have to dial a phone number to get there. Um, because we didn't have that set up before. It wasn't working right. Um, Fire, I don't think, ever got attached with the old system. And the old system, when it was purchased, was used. And so this would be an upgraded system that would have uh, regular handsets, are ones that just have a, a small screen, and the picture's on the information that I sent to you, as well as the detail of what the new bills would look like. Um, there would be one that would be an upgraded phone that I would have, um, which would be able to see who's on so I could do, dial directly or where I'd send them to the voicemail. Everybody else would just be able to dial to the, to the other extension. Of course, it's more expensive for that one. Um, there's more options available. Um, we would be able to do uh, on-hold options of having music or messages. Any upgrades that are done would be automatic. We wouldn't have to wait for some system program or programmer to come in and do anything. It would be in the phone system. Um, everybody would have the new phones at each. There would be one at each, uh, a few in our building because we have so many people that answer phones. Um, the difference was just about $25 overall for the total because it would be a little bit more for the town hall because we have the one of the better phones, the upgraded phones, but then all the other handsets would be the normal. All the other ones would have regular handsets. We would still keep the internet. We would still keep the um, fax machines at the different buildings that have them currently. We would upgrade on the internet speed and we would be able to have it. At, and I'm double checking this because he said 99% up time which means even if the internet was down, we would still, we would have our own separate internet line, which has its own server backup offsite. So even though it's through Comcast, if Comcast internet was down, our phones would still be up. The only question I had for him that he hadn't been able to get back with me on is if the phones, if, if the uh, electric was down, would we still have phones? And that I didn't get an answer for before this evening. So. May I suggest to you that you get with the police department and have a discussion because a lot of their stuff is secure. They're, the IPs are still going to stay. Everything Maybe. everything stays the same. There's I, there's no change except for the actual phone and the system that it's running on. That's the only difference. You're upgrading. There's still the IPs on the static IPs where they're supposed to be because police isn't the only one who has one. Yeah, everything stays the same that we currently have. We just upgrade the phone system. So instead of going out and spending twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars on 
phones that we attach to our current lines. We're actually buying the phone system and it's going to be a part of our monthly fee. But the way the fees go, I mean, one of them was going to be five, four dollars difference. The other one was going to go down uh, seventeen dollars. I mean, there's just the way it all figures out. We're it's virtually no change. Uh, oh, and maintenance is included in that. So if something happens with the phone, say the handset breaks, or you know the dial, the buttons don't push, or something, you just call them. They send us a new set. We send back the old one. Done. It's not that, oh, well, we bought that system. Now we have to go purchase a new one and we have to wait for it to come in. So we have to buy additional. This is part of the whole product process. So if you have any questions or anything, let me know. I did upload that with some of the information on here. Um, of course, all of these are before taxes. So what this says is just be and we don't pay sales tax, but we still have to pay the federal regulatory tax and all of those other things they like to add on. So. Anything else? Uh, I would like to set our work session for July the 28th at seven o'clock. And the reason being, I'm trying to give two weeks prior to the meeting and after, because what I've been running into is and they're only working some of the agencies two days and you can't talk to anybody or get the information that you need is just a roughly five days there uh, before we have a council meeting I'm trying to space this out a little bit more it's going to get even worse because Indy is getting ready to go on pretty much a lockdown uh, you wear a mask uh, Eric has to do all his stuff from home, except for he goes in two days during the week. So that they're literally, some of this stuff is really slowing down. You can't get to people. Do you want to just go ahead and make that like within the rest of the year? I the think we two, two should months? because I don't see this getting any better uh, at this point. That way we can kind of plan on it. With what we're seeing, uh, you know, they're looking already for an upswing. And, we need a motion for that. I would so, like when that would help. So yeah. the work session would be at the end of the month? Yeah. Well, we would make it at the month. Basically two weeks prior to the council meeting, if at all possible. So I may make a motion that we move the no, work session right. to the last of the month. Tuesday of the month, which would be two weeks, two weeks, weeks before, before the right so. I have Motion by Mark. For the rest of the year? Yeah. Okay. The last Tuesday of the month. Through December 31st. I second that. Okay. And I have a second by James. We need to probably put that on our website too. Oh yeah, it'll all be updated. We call the roll. I'll have to send it to the newspapers too. Dan Wandersee. Aye. Gary Holbert. Aye. Jack Boddicker. Aye. Mark Tucker. Aye. James Bullen. Aye. All ayes, no nays. Motion carried. That uh, um, I think will give us a little more cushion there to get what we need uh, if some of this stuff comes up. It's getting hard to talk to anybody. Don't forget to clean up day, August the 8th. And don't forget archway days, August 21st and 22nd. And with that, I do a plan. plan. So, our plan commission, plan commission on the 23rd. The plan commission on the 23rd? Yep, the 4th. At Thursday. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. And there's a BZA meeting on Thursday, July 30th. What's on the 30th? BZA. BZA on July the 30th. At <coughs> so this next, at 7, the next work session is the 28th, 28. correct? Is it going to be here? Right now, 
I have no idea. Uh, if they, he keeps things, he's there, he's got stuff right now kind of moved to August 4th. Right. And Virtual is still available till August 4th. Yeah. yeah. So, depends on what happens in the next week. Uh, well, the week of man that you get an air conditioner. If they still we got some big fans want us to do the social distancing <laughs> that stays in place, we'll pass it. Okay, so I'll put meeting to be location meeting location to be, to be determined. Now. Yeah. So with that, I make a motion that we close the Fairmill Town Council meeting from July the 14th, 2020. Do I have a second? Very good. And second by James. We call the roll, please. Dan Wandersee. Aye. Gary Holbert. Aye. Jack Bodiker. Aye. Mark Tucker. Aye. James Bullen. Aye. All ayes, no nays. Motion carried, and we thank you for coming. And it's 8:34. Hallelujah.